The next best practice is end-to-end. -end. As I mentioned, an SOA strategy really does have to encompass the entire life cycle. You have to look at planning, development, and operations when looking at an SOA strategy. The reason for this is how can you actually measure your success when your initial goals are poorly defined? So if you're just implementing operational governance, you don't really know what the context is of the governance activities that you're implementing. You don't understand how they relate back to business strategic initiatives. You don't understand necessarily what the budget is or what the cost savings goals might be. So it's very, very difficult for you to actually report on any kind of success if there are no quantifiable metrics and no goals established in the first place. So it's difficult to do development and operational governance without having some kind of planning governance put into place. One of the key drivers for SOA is agility, but this really can't be measured if you have no idea of how long it takes to go from planning through development to operations. How are you going to measure that your projects are being completed with a 20% time saving if you have no idea when they started and when they ended. So this is a classic example of how you actually need to look at the entire life cycle, how you need to relate your SOA initiative back to your business drivers, how you need to map your services back to the strategic initiatives that the organization has. I would say that you want to minimize the number of services that you produce within your organization. You want those services to have clear business value, clear return on investment, and clear benefit to you as an IT organization. The next best practice, which I spoke about before, is integrate and automate. If you think about my previous slide, I discussed the fact that you have to look at this SOA initiative from end to end, planning, development, and governance. Now, the key thing, of course, to any kind of metric or any kind of reporting is that you actually have to integrate these three stages of the life cycle. In planning, you have tools that do portfolio management. In development, you have tools that provide you with repositories, integrate with IDEs, integrate with build management. In operations, you have effectively a set of management tools. These tools at these different stages of the life cycle must be integrated to simplify and lower the overall total cost of ownership for that SO initiative, provide reporting on quantifiable metrics, and automate the common use cases such as provisioning, SLA management, and policy inheritance. Let me give you an anecdotal example. A lot of people have portfolio management tools, a lot of people have repositories, and there is no end to management tools in an operational environment. The biggest problem is there's no way, well, these different tools have different representations for the different things that they're managing. There's no way to look at your portfolio management system and correlate that to some asset within development and correlate that to some activity in your operational environment. There's no consistent representation of a service and there's no clear view of what the relationships are between business initiatives, applications that are being built, and services running in an operational environment, unless you integrate those tools together. Once you integrate those tools together, it's very easy to create reports that says, well, I have these three services produced by this application. It was developed 20% quicker than the version before it, and it is specifically designed to meet the following three business initiatives. The other thing that automation actually provides and the integration actually provides is a lower total cost of ownership. The highest cost inside an organization is people. The other high cost is, of course, QA and support and management. So if you can integrate your systems and you can automate a lot of your processes, that has two benefits. The first one is it lowers the cost of the initial development and deployment activity, and it also reduces the risk of any kind of failure in your production environment. So just as an example, if, if you automate provisioning and a developer goes into the repository and says, well, I would like access to a particular service, if the repository then sends an email off to somebody and asks that person for approval and that person says, yes, I approve that, the underlying system needs to understand what the credentials are of that individual 
and it needs to be able to modify the access control rules in the operational environment before the application actually hits the environment. So if I can automate and I can control the provisioning of a service and control access to that service based on decisions made during development time, I have taken X number of hours out of the deployment activities and the cost of ownership of that particular application. If a developer gets to pick and choose a service level within the development lifecycle or during planning, and that service level is automatically reported on, then you've saved a great deal of time in configuring your operational management tools. If you can inherit policy based on things like your information model or the meta model of a service, then you have saved the time that it's going to take and the risk of a misappropriation of a particular policy or exposure of customer data to the outside world. So automating the common use cases will ultimately save you money, it will improve your agility, and will lower the total cost of ownership of your IT environment. The next best practice, which I believe is my last, is about closing the loop. Closing the loop is kind of an extension of the existing messages that I've been trying to get across. Closing the loop is when you take and ensure the end-to-end -end fidelity and relevance of your policies and processes. When you report back into your development and planning process what is actually happening in your operational environment. When you automate the enforcement of policies, when you report and audit on the effectiveness of a particular policy or application lifecycle initiative. A classic example is as you're building applications and as you're deploying services, you need to be able to understand which operational environment that service has actually been deployed into. That will actually allow you to report on when a particular application reached a particular stage of its life cycle and hopefully over time prove that you're becoming more and more agile. Closing the loop also allows you to feed back service levels and availability and uptime statistics back into your development and planning tools so that you can see, hopefully, an improvement on your availability of applications and services in your environment. You want to be able to automate the enforcement of policies within the environment and ensure that your operational environment matches what is happening inside your development repository. The thing I see more often than not, and the thing that ultimately leads to a stagnant SOA practice, is that the operational environment has no correlation whatsoever to what is happening in your development repository. And the reason for this is that without a mature operational process, people end up doing ad hoc things in the operational environment and not updating the repository. If you close the loop and you integrate the tools, then there is no way that something can happen in the operational environment that hasn't already been pre-approved and registered within your repository. A classic example, looking at SOAP web service, just as an example. If a message comes into the ESB for a particular SOAP service, but that SOAP web service has not been registered in the repository, you need some way of either discovering that service or reporting on the fact that you have a rogue service within that environment. If that service matches a service within the repository, you need to join those dots together and you need to start reporting those statistics on the service as it is represented in the repository. So that allows you to then make sure that your operational environment is always an accurate reflection of what is happening in your planning and development stages of the life cycle. And this is kind of what I mean by closing the loop. It is not a trivial thing to do. It's difficult to come up with a representation of a service during development and somehow correlate that to messages running on the wire. But I believe that it's an essential part of making this whole thing work and ultimately getting reports that are meaningful at the end of the day. So just to conclude, you need to get business support for an SOA initiative. Don't put all your eggs into one platform or a single product and try and do everything using a single product. You can't just purchase an ESB and say, I'm done with SOA, or purchase a repository and say, I'm done, we now have an SOA. 
you need to look at the entire life cycle, you need to purchase different tools, or at the very, very least, put policies and practices in place that you can get effective reporting. You need to consider the entire life cycle, or else you won't be able to show success or justify the investments that you've made. You need to automate and streamline key use cases. So you need to be able to provide a carrot to developers and operations managers and business managers and say, I'm going to increase agility in such and such a way by such and such an amount, and I'm going to be able to reduce our risk inside the operational environment by automatically securing all credit card numbers based on schema, something like that. So you need to identify, automate, and streamline those key use cases by integrating the products together and automating the processes that you've identified. You also finally need to be able to audit and measure your success. Report on your success and say, hopefully at the end of the day, that you're saving $2 million per year because you've demonstrated an increase in efficiency, a decrease in risk, and X amount of reuse within your environment.